this train that fills the temple. I see the Lord, He is high and lifted up. The angel came and touched the coals to my lips. Now my guilt is gone. And my sins have been forgiven. Well, and I cried, I cried, Holy, Holy is the Lord. And I cried, I cried, Holy, Holy. temple is filled with the glory of God. And the whole world is filled with the glory of God. He called to me and said, whom, whom shall I send? I answered him and said, I will go for you. Well, and I cried, I cried, holy, Holy is the Lord, and I cried, holy, holy is the Lord, and I cried, I cried, holy, This morning, we discovered four important facets about God. How many? We discovered four important facets about God. The first thing we discovered was that God had to obey God because God cannot change. Remember that? i say it one more time. God had to obey God because God cannot change. God had to do what, everybody? Because God does not change. Did you get that? God does not change. God does not what? God does not change. The second thing we learned was that God had to obey God so God becomes subject to his own character. Because God had to obey God, God now becomes subject to his own character. In other words, what God told you to do, he had to do himself. And he could not change because he is God and he does not change. The next thing means... God now becomes captive 
of his own existence because he's lonely and because he's lonely he wants to make us and because he wants to make us he knows we will mess up so he becomes captive of his own character because he cannot break out of it did you get that then the next thing we learned there are consequences of God's inability to change his own nature. In other words, God had consequences himself. We all have consequences, don't we? If you do the wrong thing, what do you get? You made a choice. The choice means that you did right or you did wrong. You thought you might not get caught, but you got caught. So then God had some consequences that he had to deal with because he created us. Did you get that? He had some consequences because he created us. What were some of his consequences? Well, let me tell you what, what happened. We will find out inside of the sanctuary, as we found out this morning, that God had to make an illustration he had to make a vision. He had to make something so that God himself could see what was taking place and could understand what was happening to him. So God created what we call a sanctuary. Inside of the sanctuary, there is a total imagery of what God had to go through in order for us to be redeemed. Now here's what happened. God looks at God. God looks at God. And God says, in order for us to create man, here's what we've got to do. We've got to split ourselves. Not only do we have to split ourselves, but because we cannot change, somebody has to remain unchangeable. Somebody has to remain what? I can't hear you. Somebody has to remain what? And because somebody has to remain unchangeable, there's got to be another person in the Godhead who can change but not change. So this God steps over here like this and he says, well, here's what I'll do. God over here says, well, what are we going to do? We've gone from I to what are we going to do? This God steps over here and he says, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make myself look like man. Not only am I going to make myself look like man, I'm going to become a captive looking like man. So that every time you see me, God says, every time I see you, what? Every time you see me, you are going to look at me as though I am perfect, and I am perfect, but the person behind me who is the person we created, you won't see. So all you have to do is raise your hands up like this with blood that drips out of it, and this God over here who never changes gives us mercy. Do y'all, did y'all catch that? In other, in other, listen, listen, listen at this real good. Mercy meets the law. Grace meets the law because God himself says, I cannot change. And because God cannot change, God had to have an avenue to accept God's unchangeableness which was and is God's mercy and God's love. Now, because of these consequences, justice and mercy and grace had to come together in order to make and maintain the perfection of God. Because God is perfect. How many agree with that? 
God is, God is perfect. God doesn't make any mistakes. And because the perfection of God is within himself, and because there is this thing called mercy and grace, we are not able to walk into the sanctuary. Y'all not shouting. We're able to walk dead into the sanctuary and into the presence of God who don't like you. But because uh, of the God who did this and said, I'm going to look like them, he sees him and he doesn't see us. And so we are able to walk inside of the sanctuary. I wish somebody would talk to me. We are able to walk inside of the sanctuary in his awesome presence and start talking. Anybody up in here? And I mean, able to begin to pray to the God who said, I'm not going to change. But the God of mercy says, yes. And the God of the law says, okay, come in, not because of who you are, but because of whose I am. So then, the first thing I want you to understand in the process of going into the sanctuary. You should have your paper. You should, you should have it. How many of you have one? You should have a copy. If you don't have a copy, raise your hand. Okay. Okay. The very first thing that we must learn about the sanctuary is that we have access to God. What do we have? What do we have? We have access to God. Now, now I, I, don't, I don't know about you, but uh, there have been times in my life when I've prayed, and it appears as though God doesn't answer me. <laughs> I can't hear nobody in here. I, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, let's face it. There have been times in everybody's life and some of us are praying a prayer right now, and it still appears as though God's not answering. Huh? Okay, so now, then the question comes to mind, if I'm inside of the sanctuary, and if I am in God's awesome presence, then is God really listening to my prayers? Is God really hearing me? Now, the first thing is, I'm, I'm, by the way, I want you to take this home, and I want you to keep this, and then next Sabbath, when everybody comes back, we're going to just ask maybe one or two people how God has answered their prayers, which lets them know they have been inside of the sanctuary, because there's more to this than meets the eye. Okay, now, the first thing, in the sanctuary is if you look at praise. <laughs> you see that? Praise. God inhabits what? God inhabits what, everybody? God inhabits praise. But inside of the sanctuary, it is not such a thing as praise. It is such a thing as glad to be in your presence. I'll say it again. It's not such a thing as praise. The angels sang praises to God. But inside of the sanctuary, there is redemption going on. So I come in praise thanking God for the mere fact that he's able to hear me because I was born in sin and I was shaping in iniquity and sin is a transgression of the law. Ooh, am I too deep? Okay, now watch, watch this, watch this, watch this. When we look at 1 Corinthians 15, 31, nothing is free. You even have to pay to die. Did you hear what I just said? Nothing is free. So then, God's sacrifice was not what? I don't hear you. 
God's sacrifice was not. So then my being able to approach God inside of the sanctuary is not free either. There is a sacrifice. Look at your neighbor and say sacrifice. There is a what, everybody? There is a sacrifice. Christ paid the supreme price. But in order for us to reach his presence, we have to do a sacrifice also. So then, when I pray to God, I'm in his presence. Have I made a sacrifice? May I ask that question again? I'm in his presence now. And the question is, I want my prayers answered. The question is, am I making or have I made a sacrifice concerning the prayer I'm requesting? Did y'all get that? I, I don't hear you. I'm going to say it one more time because you're looking at me dumbfounded. This is the first time, every time we pray, most of us think God is a sugar daddy. But now I'm asking you, when you pray for something, have you made a sacrifice knowing that you will receive the prayer that you requested? Second thought, second thought. Paul says then, I must die daily. What must I do? I must die daily. I must die, what everybody? I must die daily. And then Paul says, I've got to present my body as a what? So then watch this. Part of my presence and sacrifice to God is by the way I am going to God and by the way I am acting as I get in his presence. So if my mind is asking God for something that I don't believe that I can receive, I won't get it. If I am praying without a sacrificial mind and a sacrificial body, I'm not going to receive it. That's why some people get their, what you, we get their, ter in, their territories enlarged and we don't. That's why, that's, that's why sometimes we pray. And we know beyond a shadow of a doubt or we believe that it's a myth and it's not going to take place. Or, watch this. How can I walk in God's presence and hate you? And expect God to hear me? How can I expect to walk into God's presence and don't like you? Are y'all in here? Ha. So, 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 so then those are some of the reasons why when I walk in God's presence, my prayers may not be answered. Be and the only reason why I am not struck down is because of God's mercy. Did y'all get that? So then by the mere fact, I must go inside of the sanctuary and I must sacrifice, like who sacrificed? And God's, and get this, please get this good. Because once you get this, we're going to move on. God sacrificed. The first thing you're going to say, the reason why God made the sacrifice is because he loved us. That's true. But it's not true. Because he turns around and says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So then, please, please get this, please get this. So then, listen at me closely. The reason why God made the supreme sacrifice was not just because of love, but it was also because he had to satisfy himself in maintaining his character. Are y'all here? You, you. Listen, I expect y'all to study next week so you can keep up with me. Okay? Now, the next thing. I wash 
myself. And when, you, when we go into the sanctuary, there's what we call the lava. They are all pieces in the sanctuary that represent something. And you'll get to see certain pieces as we move forward in this series. It says, I wash myself of water by the word of God. So when I walk into the sanctuary in his presence, the first thing I'm going to do is thank him. The second thing I'm going to do is confess my sins. But you got people who go inside of God's presence and think their prayers are going to be answered and they never say they've done anything wrong. They think they are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And so you expect for your prayers to be answered. <laughs> Somebody said they, they prayed. He said, Lord, I'm glad I'm not like them other people. I'm just glad I can get in his presence. So every time I pray, it, when I get up in the morning, watch me. Y'all might want to practice a part of this prayer. First thing I say is, Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning. And the second thing I say is, Lord, forgive me of my many sins. Now, I haven't sinned yet because I ain't got the day started. Y'all come on, talk to me. But, 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 but I get up in the morning and I say, Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning. And Lord, forgive me of my many sins. And when I say that, his ears perk up because I'm inside of his presence and I have washed myself fully of what I say is wrong with me because I'm already messed up. I'm already tore up from the flow up. I, I don't look like a bag of chips. I'm already messed up because I was born in sin and I was shaping in iniquity. It don't, it don't matter how I think, what I look, what I feel. I'm already a sinner. But thank God I'm saved by grace. I'm saved by grace. The candlestick. There's a seven-branch candlestick, but then there's, a, there's, a, there's what I call a candlestick. It means that I must receive the Holy Ghost. Uh-oh. It means what, everybody? I must receive the Holy Ghost. Now watch this. Watch this. The Father, God number one, is the law. He don't change. Are y'all here? He don't change. Where is he? Come on, talk to me, everybody. I, you know, he's where, everybody? He's in heaven. He does not change. Wait, can I? BJ, come up here, will you? Come. Young lady, come. Take your little coat off and shoot up here right quick. Okay, now here's what I want you to do. You stand right there. You guard the Father. You don't what? Change. Oh, I don't change. You don't change. This is the Son. <laughs> he had to change. He had to look like us. Amen? He had to change. But this God over here doesn't what? Change. This God over here doesn't change. All right. Now, this God here, step over here, this God here satisfies this God so that the wrong that I have done is eliminated. But these two gods are where? Where are they now? But there is another God. He's the Holy Ghost. That's me. Is that all right with y'all? He, he, he's, the, he's the Holy Ghost. Now, unless I have the Holy Ghost, when I walk into the sanctuary, I can't get to him. 
Because it's the Holy Ghost in Romans, it tells us, Romans 8. It's the Holy Ghost that takes my prayer, because I'm unholy, to him. This is the one that this God here will not accept, except he sees him. Are y'all in here? I, I'm, giving, I'm giving the prayer. Uh, listen, you woke me up this morning. I've been a bad person. I want you to forgive me of my sins. And while you're in the process of forgiving me of my, of my sins, I want a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> now, 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 now. He goes over here. Get to God the Father. Hold hand. And he tells God the Father what I said. Are y'all in here? He tells God. And the reason why God the Father listens to him is because God the Son is doing the talking, but I'm behind here and don't even know it. So then, unless, y'all can go sit down. So then, unless I have the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost has to guide me into all truth. Are y'all in here? This Holy Ghost has to guide me into all truth, not some truth. Because the God the Father and God the Son that was up here only believes in truth. And they don't take nobody's truth but their truth. They don't take man's truth. They don't take nobody's truth but their truth. And their truth was in existence before you showed up. Because their truth made them captive of their own truth. That's why God the Son is over here and God the Holy Ghost is over there. God will preach, Pastor Cox. All right. Okay, now. Showbread. The showbread means that I am supposed to be eating something. I'm not talking about eating raisin bread either. I'm talking about learning how to eat the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Thy word have I hid in my heart, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. Do you understand that? Now here comes the good one. You notice as you get to, as you get to come back and you, you'll look at these video clips and you'll see incense. You'll think it's smoke, but it's incense. Now watch this. Watch this. I am supposed to not only pray for myself, but I am supposed to pray for others. And until I learn how to pray for others, I cannot fully get into his presence. I have done four things. I have come into his, to the sanctuary with praise. I have come into the sanctuary with the fact that I need God. I have come into the sanctuary asking for forgiveness. I have come into the sanctuary realizing that it is the Holy Ghost that takes my prayers to God the Son, and God the Son takes it on up to God the Father. Now here comes the clincher. Here comes the what, everybody? It tells us in Revelation that when I pray, when I pray, say when I pray. No, say like you mean it. That means y'all don't sound like y'all really pray a lot. Can y'all say it like y'all really mean it when I pray? There you go. When I pray, my prayer is as stink 
before God. My presence inside of the sanctuary is stank. Did y'all hear what I just said? My presence, my prayers is as stank. But then, <laughs> Jesus Christ mixes it up with his love. And it goes on up to God the Father as sweet merit of incense. So stank now becomes a sweet smell. Look, look at, okay. Revelation 8, 3. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints. The prayers of the what? Uh, no, wait, wait. I, you see, I want you to catch that. The prayers of the saints, not the sinners. <laughs> I just say I just say the word did the prayer of the saints ascends where now how do I determine the process can y'all give me a couple more minutes because I told you one hour give me just a couple more minutes how do I determine the process of my sainthood and my sinnerness? <laughs> how, 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 do I, how do I determine that factor? Proverbs. Write it down on your little sheet of paper. First thing I must make sure that I'm doing one, Proverbs 28, 9 says, one who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Oh. Do you know there's only four things that God calls an abomination? Homosexuality is one. Adultery is two. And the third one, not keeping God's law. That's deep, isn't it? Not keeping God's law. Because you want your prayers answered from a perfect God who had to die to take care of his own law, and here you come saying it ain't no good. So then even my prayer is an abomination. In other words, you have the nerve to come to me and ask me for something when you don't respect what I did for you? Let me, let, me, let, me break it, let me really break it down to y'all so y'all can understand. You tell your son, I want you in this house at such and such and such a time. He grown now. He think he grown. And so he wants to come in at 4 o'clock in the morning. And then you say, where you going? And I'm, I'm coming home. Nah. You mean to tell me you want to come in my house and you don't have the respect to obey my rules and regulations? God's the same way, honey. I can't get nobody to agree. Do y'all agree with that? I can't hear you. Does God, do you agree with that? If you agree with that, just raise your hand. I mean, you, if you agree with that. Now watch this. Number two. The sacrifice. And I told you, you have to Make a sacrifice in order to pray. Now watch this. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. I, I didn't say that. So in order for me to pray, I got I to gotta have a sacrifice. But then the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the law. Because here again, I am coming to a God who is telling me 
what I need to do. This God had to do do it himself, and I have the nerve to say I'm not going to do it. It's been done away with. It don't mean a thing. Da, 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 da. I'm a, a New Testament Christian. It's been nailed to the cross. I'm a this. I'm a that. I'm a da, 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 that. And I got the nerve to pray to God who said I have to die myself in order to fulfill my law so that you can walk one day on streets of gold. But the rest of the text says, the prayer of the upright. Then finally, the Lord is far from the wicked. But he hears the prayers of the righteous. Uh, I want you to get this. I uh, was raised in New Orleans. And uh, my, uh, our house wasn't a big house. It was a, it was a little house. It, it was a little house and uh, three bedrooms. Three bedrooms and one bathroom. Do y'all know about that? Three boys in one room. And we kept our room clean, by the way. And uh, I had praying, I had a praying parents and a praying grandmother. And the most amazing thing about prayer is that grandmother, when she prayed, she had eight children. She had how many children? She had how many children? She had eight children, and she would name them all in her prayer. And she would begin to name the grandchildren. And grandmother knew everybody's birthday. She would say, don't ever send me no dry card. And every time grandmother would send a card, it was something inside of it. Dollar, back then a dollar was a lot of money. And so, as I got older, grandmother got more feeble, but I would, I would hear grandmother pray. And she would call out Uncle Albert. She would call out Aunt Doris. She would call out Uncle George. She would call out Aunt Betty. She would call out my mother. Then she would get down to the grandchildren. And I'd be waiting to hear grandmother call my name. She would she would start calling George the third. She would start calling Daniel and Lolita and oh, I'm talking about my cousins. And then finally, she would get to our clan and I'm the oldest. And I would hear her say, Lord, remember James Jr. I just, Ooh. But then I remember this blessed thing. 
The Bible says that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. I am told and we are told that the prayers of a mother will ultimately come to pass. I'm talking about prayers being answered. Prayers of a mother will ultimately come to pass. Grandmother's been dead now for over 15 years. But I would hear her pray, Lord, remember my wayward son Albert. Six years ago, grandmother's been dead, but six years ago, Uncle Albert gave his heart to the Lord. He's never, ever taken a drink since. God answers prayers. And because God answers prayers, every time I get down on my knees, uh, lay flat on my back, uh, or say in my mind, uh, my Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Amen means uh, so let it be. And so when I look back, uh, when I get down on my knees, uh, and when I pray, uh, I can see the Holy Ghost uh, coming down, uh, taking my prayers uh, up to the Son, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I see him speaking in his ears what it is that Cox needs. I see him talking now to the father, and the father looks at the son, and the son says, don't you say nothing, father. And he opens up his hands, and he shows the blood, the blood that flows from Emmanuel's veins, the blood, the blood, it's the blood, and because of that, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm redeemed.